Hi, I have a question. What do you think works in reducing income inequality? So active labour market interventions, raising the minimum wage, enforcing it, uh, increasing social spending, improving access to quality education, or is it increasing taxation on the wealthy? All of those policies would likely reduce income inequality if implemented. But there's a further question. How do governments want, how do governments come to be motivated to implement those redistributive policies? I think to understand that question, it's useful to learn from history, to look at countries where there has been a significant reduction in income inequality and try to understand why that's happened. So across the world, most countries are experiencing a rise in income inequality, but there is one region that's bucked that trend, Latin America. Over the 2000s, Gini coefficient reduced by about 13%, especially in the southern cone. And let's try to think about why that might have happened and what we can learn from. So they, they implemented all the policies I mentioned before. So the question is, why, why did that happen? I think there are three possible explanations, and I'd be interested in your views. One is increased fiscal space over the 2000s with the commodities boom, aid, aid uh, economic growth, there was more fiscal space for redistribution. And also workers benefited in wages from the commodity boom. But I don't think increased fiscal space is a full explanation. I mean, there was also economic growth uh, by about 2.6% in the 1990s, but that didn't trigger redistribution. Actually, income inequality increased. Also, there are many wealthy countries that choose not to redistribute their wealth but instead keep it for the ruling elites. And some of the wealthiest countries in the region, like Chile, choose not to redistribute some of that wealth. So I don't think increased fiscal space is a full explanation. Another possibility is democratization. But again, many countries were democracies in the 1990s, so why didn't they redistribute more? I mean, the hypothesis is that in a context of democracy, political parties will compete to favour the median voter, which is likely poor in a context of income inequality. But that didn't happen. And lots of cross-national research, such as by Simodio and Robinson, suggest there's no correlation between democracy and social spending or, or income inequality falling. So, income in so democracy doesn't seem to explain the shift either. A third explanation, social movements. Now, if we look at organised labour or indigenous social movement, there's a strong, statistically significant relationship between these organisations, social movements, and increased social spending and reduced inequality. Why could that be? How do, how do social movements cause a reduction in inequality? Well, two ways, really. One is shifting government interests. Um, so, for example, if indigenous groups occupy the Pan-American highway, they disrupt commerce and trade, threatening economic growth, threatening elite interests. Another possibility is by shifting ideas, by politicising inequality. And this is something I don't think we take seriously enough in development studies. Ideas really matter in perpetuating inequalities. People can take inequalities for granted. They might just think of it as a natural, inevitable distribution. They may not regard themselves as entitled to better services, better treatment. They may regard discrimination as natural. They may think that it's problematic, but hey, what can you do to change it? They may think that they won't be supported by others if they speak out, so they stay quiet. But social movements change this. Social movements change this in a couple of ways, especially by coming together, exploring new ideas through collective kitchens or by organised protests or land invasions. Landless people's movements, indigenous groups, women's groups, organised labour, the unemployed, collectively developed an alternative way of thinking. And through sharing ideas with others, they became more confident in those possibilities, in those alternatives. They came to recognise their strength in numbers. Through marching, through large-scale protests, they realised their strength in numbers. And they became more confident in an alternative. Their norm perceptions, their beliefs about what other people do, but people think and do, began to shift. They began to become more confident in an alternative way of doing things. So slowly, incrementally, often conflictually, social movements politicised inequality, shifting ideas about what was possible and what was achievable in Latin America. 
And this also worked not, so, not only at the national level, but also through regional diffusion. When ethnic, political, when ethnic parties gained political power, other ethnic political parties formed in other countries. When they saw what was possible in Brazil or Argentina, they became inspired and wanted to try things out in their own country. So ideas really matter, and I think social movements shifted ideas about inequality in Latin America, leading to a rise in support for leftist parties and thereby an increase in social spending and a reduction in inequality. So what do we learn from this in the development community about what works? Well, trying to think about recognising that social movements matter and trying to think about how we can support them, and also recognising the power of ideas, the power of people's norm perceptions, that is their beliefs about what others think and do. So we need to think creatively about how to shift those. I have a couple of ideas of my own, but I'd be interested in yours. Thank you.